Let's look at this Mercedes. They can't start the engine. There's no notification on the dashboard. Car just simply don't start. I tried it here and touch the relay when having my friend inside the car trying to turn the keys to starting position. I don't know if you can hear it, but I do hear it clicks. So the relay might not be the problem at this point. We will go on and follow the procedure. I'll jump start the car to find whether we have a problem with the starter. If not, we can eliminate it. It jumps right up, so the starter is not a problem. Let's scan it to see if there is any DTC shows up. I don't see any DTCs on our sentry at all. Just the same as a dashboard. Let's moving on. I look at all the modules that our starter wiring diagrams is related to. The first one would be the engine module N3/10. The second one is the front sam, since it's send power to the relay. The final one would be our um, electronic ignition switch N73. Now, let's see the description image of our starting diagram when turning the key. The first position when you just plug the key in is 15C. The next position when you turn the key one time is 15R. The third position is 15 and 15X. The final position when we start the car is 50. Please remember, these are nothing complicated. 15 and 50 are just signals at the according key positions. Signal 15R and 15 at the second and third position via can be send their signals to the according relays. Then this relay will output the according powers. The signal 50 is a bit different since it has one more step to go. Via can E, it will send a signal to our ECM and 3 slash 10. Then the ECM will send a direct signal to the according relay, which is relay 50, to close the starter circuit. Here, the circuit is complete, so we can start the car. Now, to give you a better understand, let's look at the starter block diagram with my explanation. This will give you a bigger picture of how things works. M1 is our starter, which receives a signal from the starter relay. N10 slash 1km. This relay is located on the front sam N10 slash 1. So this is the diagram from the front sam to the starter. Let's go back to the beginning when you turn the key. From the ECS or ignition switch, when you turn the key, signal 50 will be sent to the ECM N3 slash 10 via can Then this signal 50 will be sent to the starter relay by this ECM to close the circuit. Hence, we powered the starter. We were able to jump start the car, so the starter and the wiring from the starter relay is definitely not a problem. So let's analyze it and give ourselves a handy question so we can tackle this job. Is the signal from the ignition switch to the ECM working? Is the signal from the ECM to the starter relay good? And the final question would be, is the starter relay itself working correctly? Now we will go test them step by step. Starting with our first question, do we have a good signals from the ignition switch to the ECM? We will use actual values option on our sentry to set the status of circuit when turning our key to each stages. Choose N73 or ignition switch module. Click continue. I'll do it slow, so if you're new to sentry, you can still follow along. Choose actual values they start as sub-circuits. My key is currently in the ignition switch. Now I'll pull the key out so we can start over. As you will see the actual values will be back to off position. Now I'll put it back to the ignition. You will see the value of the first position which is 15C is on. Second position 15R on. Third position 15 and 15X on. Now we will test the last but most important one, the signal 50. The value is also on when I turn the key, so we are good in this step. Now, we will move on to the next step, which is testing the signal from the ECM to the starter relay. What I do is, 
I used two LED lights to prop the 85 and 86 pins on the starter relay. Then I turned the key to starting position to see if they output a signal by catching the LED lights flashing. I'll have my friend start the key for me. Let's see if the LED light flash. So they flashing. It means the signal from the ECM to this relay is good and active. So far, we have figured out two parts out of three. There is only one final part to check, which is the relay. You can carefully test the relay by supplying power to 85 and 86. Then use a multimeter to test resistance on 87 and 30. If the resistance is too high, there won't be power passing through the relay. Then the relay is failing. In my case, I have another relay which is exactly similar to the one in my car. So I'll swap it out and start a car to see if it can fix the problem. I'll have my friend start a car for me. Let's see if it works. It starts right up. So the problem I had was a bad relay. This might sound very simple, but if you don't know how to check a relay, or you don't know the procedure in which you can follow once you think you have a good relay, fixing something similar to this will be a nightmare.